Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Barrel Shop. The ABV Barrel Shop is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri, and is the world's first single barrel only liquor store. This business is owned and operated by Steve Akeley and Jim Fosnott. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to sign up for their email and text distribution list. That way you'll know what they have in stock, what classes are coming up, and what barrel picks they have in the works. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers a fully customizable carrying case that allows you to take your favorite distilled spirits or cocktail ingredients with you. Whether you're looking for yourself, a customized gift, or logo items for your business or event, The Bar to Go can help. Check them out at thebartogo.com. Use the number two when you type out The Bar to Go. Did you know Neely Family Distillery now ships its popular distilled spirits directly to you? To order, simply call 859-394-3258. Tell them the ABV Network sent you. And now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we discuss the stages of bourbon love. My name is Miss Becca Sue. Please join me in welcoming my co-host, Steve Akeley, along with our special guests, Katie Joyce, Evan Van Skoig, and Lenny Eckstein. Hey, gang. What's up? Howdy. Hey, guys. Yo. Hey, oh, so yes, we've got a fun show today. We're going to be talking about the stages of bourbon love. Uh, sounds like Evan's really done some homework here. He's ready to go. So we'll, we'll kick that off with him, but we'll get to that after the break. Uh, and before we even get to small talk, I do have an announcement. So uh, we just recorded a show and I, I meant to talk about this on that, but I forgot that, that happens at this age. But um, I talked to uh, Misty Kennard and uh, she said that, uh, please keep using the Danny bumpers in the show. She wants to keep them involved. I had done this thing where I, you know, retired them uh, uh, because I didn't know. I, I didn't feel comfortable just continuing to run someone's voice uh, on a show without permission from the family. And uh, Misty heard that and said, absolutely. That's a way to keep him, you know, his memory alive and to keep him involved in the ABV network, something he loved. So I thought that was pretty cool. So I'll put one, uh, one of those bumpers in today's show. And then moving forward, we'll do it like we always have done it. Uh, they'll Love be it. just sprinkled in there from time to time. Pretty cool stuff, right, gang? Good news. Yeah. It's awesome. I like yeah. it. Good stuff. Cool. Danny All right. That. Yep. Uh, Lenny, you said there's something you wanted to talk about. What is that, Lenny? Well, uh, so I got stung by a yellow jacket last week uh, in the armpit <laughs> right here. Oh, that doesn't and, sound uh, now, now, No, yellow jackets, uh, so they're out in the forest in Buena Vista right now. Maybe the whole country. Uh, maybe it's like the new murder hornet um but we've had a lot of rain it's my theory that that's what's contributed to it but they're horrible i was sitting on the patio deer hammer uh minding my own business eating some french fries and uh yeah i just felt a sting in my pit and it swelled up it was really annoying uh i'm not trying to belly ache about it but goddamn like it's not nothing and i was talking to like some of the other folks at deer hammer and they were kind of laughing at me they're like Pfft. It's not a big deal, dude. Like, right, it's, right. It's not. I mean, but you know, is it these not, are though? these are yeah, these are these are people that can have a, a pain tolerance uh, of, to some degree. I, I know I you're, guess. you're sensitive. So, I was on a motorcycle ride today, and I stopped, and I was just like, uh, actually, I was, I was <laughs> interestingly, this is a parallel small talk. I was taking pictures of deer hammer bottles, and I accidentally knocked the bottle into the river. Uh, so that was the end of that bottle. But, <laughs> oh no, that sucks. Yeah, nobody saw it, so I just walked away. Like so it it's no happen. crime then. Yeah, no one saw it. Yeah, other yeah, than yeah. the confession but, uh, right here. Yeah. If yeah. Lenny but, drops but back a, to the a point. bottle in the river, does anyone see it? <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, my first thought was, well, somebody will enjoy it. And my second thought was, well, there's no cap on it, so it's full of river water now. Oh, oh yeah. no. But m more to the point, uh, as I'm walking back to my bike. Um, a yellow jacket's flying around at me and I contemplated running away because I was like, I'm not getting stung again. I can't take it. And like, I just wanted your guys' opinion. I mean, like, I, I don't think running away is ever the right answer, but I would have liked to have seen it. Arms flailing, I'm sure. It would have been, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> like put the rest uh, of the bottles in the river and run away. Yeah. But I, and I even I, I was talking to a guy a couple of days ago who has uh beehives on his property. Right. And I asked him, I was like, you know, I hear yellow jackets are pollinating creatures and they're kind of beneficial. And he's like, no, they're not. And he was like, they actually attack our bees. I hate them. The so like, the I, this is a bit of a cliche question, but d why do these things exist? Why don't we eradicate them? Because God hates us. 
I guess. I, I just feel like there you go. I mean, there you have it. We can stop COVID. Can't we stop yellow jackets? Can we stop yellow jackets? They, they, yeah. they Burn them with don't fire. Have any ben- There's no benefit to yellow jackets. They kill yeah. our bees who are pollinators, okay. and they sting the fuck out of us. They Let's, get all- Let's get rid of them. Let's get rid of them. Armpit, no less. Okay. Yeah, the they're, they're they're literally assholes. There's nothing it good was, about them. At least Arizona. Bees- edu claims that they feed their young on insects that would otherwise damage crops and ornamental mm, plants in do your they? garden <laughs> do i don't they really know? care like do we they can use, we can use pesticides for them. <laughs> yeah <laughs> like guess what we can use other things I'll, i think i'll use my spiders instead i would rather have spiders yes. than yellow yes, jackets i've got a spider that i keep that I, i've got some spiders outside my house that i do i tell everyone leave Oh. Or berries alone and leave Charlotte alone on our first floor because they're out here killing bugs. That's what I got them here for. I oh. will murder hornets, though. Any chance. Shit, the worst. Hornet. And know what? what? Running away is a bitch move. Um, you should have just <laughs> backed him and yeah, killed him. I, did, I didn't run away. I lessened I contemplated. their population. <laughs> I mean, I just think of run. The, the same Lenny who, who wanted to fight all these other distillers oh, is yeah. like not the, Do one, I the yellow jacket. Oh, yellow jackets thing. Oh, <laughs> a week of put you in a cage armpit. match. A week of swollen armpit, huh? D- and didn't I'm last not going to be in a cage so. match with a whole nest of yellow jackets. I'd rather take on a distiller than uh, a whole nest of yellow jackets. That's what I'm saying. That it was just one though. It wasn't even a whole nest. Yeah. No, oh, there was, was one. The area. It was Isn't just it, one. Stick. Is it true that if you smash one, that the other ones like can smell yeah. that you killed it, and then I they just, all come to kill you? I just pulled that up. That said, mm-hmm. according to arrowexterminating.com, it says when you swat or kill a yellow jacket, the dead insect gives off a pheromone which mm. attracts more yellow jackets from its colony, which is why the EPA recommends avoidance when it comes to yellow jackets, making sure your home is not a nesting location. So it seems like mm. the EPA suggests you should run. Or okay. kill it with fire. Flamethrower. I, think, I, no I retract pheromones. my previous statement of God hates us. I think that the government has done this. <laughs> you think they were they were introduced by the government. Se- it was secretly the EPA. Why? They are trying to get you stunk. Yeah, why else? The- would, would this evil creature exist? Have you guys I think it is a big lately? deal by the way. I'm with you Lenny. It's I'm not yeah. cuz like if you I have not been stung by a yellow jacket thankfully, no. but even no just one has, from but Lenny wasps and bees like i remember where i was when i have been stung by each wasp and each bee like in my life so like yeah. it is a bit of a traumatic experience like but being here's stung. The thing. it's not the, it's not the pain so much like it hurt for like uh i don't know five seconds but the, the swelling was horrible like it looked like well it was kind of cool because my arms look huge disproportionate <laughs> to the other Jack, just yeah. the one. it was like it was- the swelling underneath was just like Oh, I went too hard tries. on left arm day. We need to pick up on exactly. right arm day. <laughs> I tries. I tries. You're looking huge. Oh, yeah, yeah. that part was cool, but I mean, not that cool. They're they're definitely evil, horrible creatures. Yeah. Right. So yeah. kill, kill. Has the yeah. weather yeah. started to turn colder in your area right now? It's cooling off, but it's not cold. Cold. I mean, it was. I was sweating today. Do you guys want to know, you know the best way to kill these things? What flamethrower? Flamethrower. Yeah, sure. that's what I've been saying. I'm, I'm See, glad Evan you're on said board. it earlier, and he's not wrong. Fire, flamethrower, just burn them all. So we've been we using just... a dustbuster at Gear Hammer. It works pretty well. Yeah, bro, dustbuster. Sure, sure. That's. But then you see me the out in the backyard yelling Jerkaris. <laughs> <laughs> just burning them. All right. Well, guess what, gang? It is time to drink. What is our? Let's start with Lenny. He felt he uh, he was robbed last time. Let's see how he does this time. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I've got some, um, older urban, uh, it's a single barrel. Uh, yeah. hundred proof. Okay. What brand is it? Uh, well, so, uh, Boulder spirits, uh, is the brand it's made okay. by vapor distillery in Boulder. Okay. I thought you said older. Before. I think you said older. Yeah, too. I, I, got got it too. I got some older bourbon. Okay. Congrats. What, what's it rhymes with older. Good for okay. you. It's older. Bourbon. Older. Right. No oh, more talking. <laughs> Our fault. You want to be this time? Instead of him waiting for us to shut the fuck up, Lenny just keeps on like just now, open Becca, it up. Now you know what happened to me. He's always we, like, we oh, could hear it, Lenny. He just we wants to attack it. it. You know what? Lenny is the yellow jacket of the Bourbon Daily, just waiting to attack oh, yeah. Yeah. for no fucking reason. Just <laughs> buzz, 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 buzz. doesn't world. die after the attack. Yeah. Just keeps on yeah. stinging away. 
I, I, I got to say, we have nothing there. I, we, I didn't hear anything. I, I, didn't I heard it. It was decent. I heard talking. I heard talking. I heard it. It was fine. I heard, Becca, I heard Becca. talking. It was heard Becca. All right, Becca, you're next. What do you got? Um, j- Just for Lenny, I've got one that's probably not going to make much of a pop. So, you know, maybe he could win with his shitty fucking talk pop. I'll try. <laughs> um, I've got some bullet bourbon here. Just their, uh, their regular bourbon that just it tastes like juicy fruit. So. Okay. I like four roses. Okay. See that, Lenny? That's called waiting for people to shut up. Yeah. There oh, you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Dad. Big timing on my part to shut up. All right. Becca's got the lead. Becca's got the lead. What do you got, Kitty? I have a bottle of Baby Jane. Okay. Is that Baby a Jane. Bottle too? That oh, I got. that's new. I bet you this is going to be a it good is. pop. Look how long that neck is. Jeez, that thing's, I know. That's a, cra- that's a crazy ass bottle. Wait a minute. What did you just do there? Don't do that again. How did you demonstrate the? Don't. That's better. That's better. That's <laughs> better. All right. All right. What do you got there? Katie? Here we go. Oh, I didn't. Hold on. I didn't peel it enough. I'm so sorry. The plastic oh, jeez. Oh. Oh. It would have been great if she could have just. Enough. Oh, man. This would have been good. The this is all neck pour. I had the yeah. setup and everything. The whole thing's a neck pour. Yeah. <laughs> pour the neck pour out. With this half the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're ready. Now we're the ready. anticipation. <laughs> oh, oh. I don't even know how to score that. What do you think, Evan? Well, I'm going to let Evan make the call here. that Because uh, it's definitely a different it pitch. Was, I mean, that's... Uh, I don't know what you want to do on that one. Like it was up there. It, it's like a high fastball. I think it's still a strike. You're good. Okay, she's good. Isn't she's got the lead. Default first place. She's got default first place. It, it, uh, I'll tell you what, though. So high-pitched dogs are going crazy. Really, she got all the dog votes. Yeah. They're like, oh, my God, that was thunderous. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I've got five brothers here. Again, another Heaven Hill gift shop pick. Here we go. Nothing. That was worse than the last one. All right, uh, Evan, you're last but not least. All right. Well, it might be at least. You never know. Uh, I've got a Starlight. Uh, this is a rye finished in apple brandy barrels. My God, him and his Starlight and Nulu's. God, he loves those two. Nulu. Nulu. I have. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I have like four Nulu. Calm down. It's like it's not even like in my top like seven or eight. Distilleries. But he talks about it all the time. It, it's in not in his top seven or eight, but it's in his top one as far as talking about. So I yeah. feel like I've talked about it. Like and Evan talks a lot. So ever. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> okay. No, not enough. Uh, <laughs> Katie takes it with the uh, with the neck pour. Uh, that's the name of the brand. The neck pour from from Widow Jane. Cheers, Cheers gang. Jeez. All right. Well, she got a uh, frosted uh, uh, Glen Cairn there. What is that? I do. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. It's bourbon interesting. Hood. Interesting. All right. We'll take a quick break, and then when we come back, we're going to be talking about the stages of bourbon love. We'll do that in just a few. Let's talk about the people who make these shows happen. First up is the ABV Barrel Shop. It is the most unique shopping experience in the world of bourbon, as the ABV Barrel Shop only sells single barrels, owners Steve Akeley and Jim Fosnott select. With over 100 distilleries on board to sell us barrels, we are home to the most unique and diverse barrel pick selections in the bourbon world. By signing up for our email, you will always know what we have in stock. In addition to the single barrels, we'll have a gift shop featuring ABV Barrel Shop as well as ABV Network merchandise. We are partnering with vendors like Art Eatables and Old Man Bay Signs to bring you unique items you can't find anywhere else. We'll also have a 24C classroom where we are offering educational and fun classes like Breakfast and Bourbon, a series where we pair donuts and bourbon, customer barrel picks, and opportunities to learn from master distillers and other bourbon dignitaries. Best of all, we feature a tasting bar where you can try before you buy. All of this is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri. If you are in the St. Louis area, please stop by to say hi. If you're traveling in from outside the area, please take advantage of our hotel rates with the Drury Inn and Pear Tree Inn less than a mile from our shop. This can be done via the links in our Visit St. Louis section on our website. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to plan your trip. The ABV Barrel Shop, it's where single barrels live. Hi, this is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network. We're sponsored by the Staven Thief Society. This is where you, a bourbon enthusiast, can expand your knowledge and emerge a bourbon steward. In 2017, I completed my Executive Bourbon Steward Certification. 
It's the most comprehensive bourbon certification program available and connects you with an expansive network of bourbon enthusiasts and professionals. Check out the full listing of in-person and online certifications and join the society today by enrolling at staventhief.com. Okay, let's talk about the Neely Family Distillery. In 2018, I met Royce Neely at an industry event. He started appearing on our shows and we became friends during my frequent trips to Kentucky. Today, he is amongst the leaders of young distillers, leaving their mark on the bourbon industry. A visit to Neely Family Distillery yields insight on their unique family history, why their products are special, and gives you the opportunity to taste their whiskey, moonshine, and creams. Check them out at neelyfamilydistillery.com or visit them in Sparta, Kentucky. Go ahead, Danny. Is there something you need to say? Just sitting there saying that uh, plain and simple, uh, if you're sending it me to a text, you need to tell me you need to send it to me on a text. So, I, <laughs> <laughs> oh. Welcome back to the Bourbon Daily. Today we're talking about the stages of bourbon love. Bourbon love. Remember when you guys fell in love with bourbon? Let's talk about the stages that you went through. All right. Evan says he wants to take a run at this thing. He's even got a word document. So let's yeah. let's hear what you got. And that, that can be the base. And then we can you know add what we need to or say uh, he's crazy if he's got something in there and it shouldn't even be in there. So Evan, what, what did you come up with? Yeah. Uh, so I start off with introduction. All right. So that's where you're probably either that's just good. getting first sure. introduced uh, maybe you're trying some mixed drinks or something like that to try and get into bourbons. Then, phase two, you're keeping things casual. You might buy a few bottles. You might visit a few places. Phase three, though, you start experimenting. So you try lots of new things, checking out craft distilleries. You're going to some of the big guys. Um, and then you start to socialize. So you're going to events. You're, you're joining societies. You're building that fellowship. Then you really get bought in. So you start buying things for your house, like sh new shelving. You might start considering, do I want to build a home bar? Then you start to indulge. You buy way too many bottles. You start drinking way too much. Uh, you get into the situation I am where you talk about a couple of new bottles and Steve thinks it's the only thing he owned. <laughs> Then, one of the last stages is that you begin to indoctrinate others. You attempt to start converting your friends. Maybe they're casual drinkers or any like, you need to try this. You start, you take them over to some of your more interesting things, maybe some top shelf, just to entice them. And now that you're indoctrinating people, you have to take this full on like it's a cult. You invite them in a non-threatening way. You give them love bombs, reassurances. You dangle a prize. You could have these too. Then you extract that agreement. You get their buy-in. Then you have to isolate like any good cult does. So you either physically isolate or you mentally isolate these people. And then you give them a rally, some, a cause to bring them to back onto your side. And now you have created your own society, your own group, or like an ABV network crew club. <laughs> this is the cycle of bourbon. The cycle you bring, of bourbon. Yourself comes in and then you bring in more. Okay. Are okay. we, wait, are we an MLM? <laughs> we are, we are, yes. Oh no. The one thing I swore to destroy <laughs> I have become. <laughs> You so, either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. We're a multi-level multi marketing thing. So, Evan, I think you did a good job there. I do think there are some areas for uh, some additions there. I, I like when you, you advance to experimenting, but I do think before that, there should be a stage of discovery. I think yes. I think most people come in and they're, and they're, they're just... They're liking what, what, whatever they're, they're introduced to. And like, oh, and it could be something as simple as I'm a maker's guy. That's, that's what I drink. And then someone's like, uh, if for some reason or another, they try something different and be like, oh, there's something there. there oh, and then they start experimenting. So I think discovery leads to experimentation. Uh, I like where you're going with that. It's I also think addition. that there's like, you step into the extremism, mm -hmm. like any cult. 
Right. Yeah. There's the extremism. I think you're... after mm-hmm. indulging would be the extremism, almost the obsession part of this. Yes. Whether you're chasing the hard to find bottles or, you know, whatever it is, or, or buying multiples of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy stuff. Yeah. I say the obsession. Like, yeah, I was thinking like more on the tangible lines, although I appreciate every stage that Evan, um, you know, yeah, he came up with good there. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I, but like, I, I was thinking more like for myself, even, um, you know, uh, just bourbon on the rocks, like ordering something that I felt comfortable with uh, back in the day where I said, okay, I'm going to latch onto this. this is going to be my thing. And I don't care what bourbon they put in there. Um, I feel like a lot of folks do that before they get uh, a taste for it and really start going down that road. And then I think like following that, my, my thought was like declaring favorites is a, a thing on people's path. So those yep. might be the Basil Hayden, Woodford Reserve, things like that on the mm-hmm. early side. And then like, I, I was trying to think of like what, what follows that. So I think there's a saying that everyone on their path, not everyone, but a lot of people say, which is like, they might then order a bourbon and the bartender might say, would you like that neater on the rocks? And then they have to say, neat, always neat. That, that almost has to happen in, uh, <laughs> for people. Um, I think they discover craft whiskey shortly after that and are pretty stoked on it. Uh, followed by declaring craft whiskey as too young and too expensive. (laughs) (laughs) You know, uh, then followed by various forms of bottle snobbery and age statement flexes, uh, (laughs) proclaiming all things Sazerac. (laughs) That's a stage, all things Sazerac. (laughs) And then, uh, (laughs) but then I think like, you know, you go all hard in the paint and you bring it back. Um, Coming around to the more acquirable value bourbons, maybe they're, they're cool with the like, you know, Russell's Reserve or, you know, Wild Turkey 101 or whatever. Um, and then they come fully around and they rediscover craft whiskey again and figure out that that's kind of where it's at. I agree. Craft whiskey and barrel picks. I also think that <laughs> I, think a, I have uh, barrel, barrel picks bar- on my bar- list. Barrel picks well. needs to be in there because that, yeah, that, that becomes a focus because it, it is attainable. That's a good call. At some point, you, your spirit gets broken for all the stuff you can't. Even when you see the new releases, I, I, I think about that. I I heard that coming into the state of Missouri, they're going to have a a hazmat seagrass. We know I love seagrass. We know I love hazmat. This is a good combination. Yet I'll never see it. So it's it's hard to get too fired up. You get to that point where your your spirit's broken a little bit, and you don't even care about all the exciting new things. Like yeah, because you know you're not going to get it. Unintended or no? Spirit. Well, uh, Oh, that was unintended. Yeah. yeah. I I think that there's also another stage of um, the spousal um, cutoff Uh um, where you have bought too many things and your spouse either (laughs) restricts you from buying multiple or Uh or, or totally cuts you off and then you're never seen again. And then you divorce them. And then you divorce them. Yes. Then you try to reemerge, and then the process starts yeah, longer. Yeah. Um, but there's, but there's definitely there's there's all of a sudden the route. There's like the, the three fork route of the <laughs> spouse cutting you off from extreme bottle buys, uh, cutting you off completely, or divorce. Or divorce, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you either go you go down one of those paths, assuming that your spouse is not a bourbon person. Now, when you're lucky enough that your spouse is a bourbon person, then you don't go down that road generally. But if you go down the divorce road and you're both the bourbon people, then you have to, Ooh. you know, split uh, your bourbon collection. So, okay, if you run into that, the road. Katie, as an attorney, have you run into uh, fights over bourbon collections uh, in divorces? I have not had a fight over bourbon specifically yet. Okay, thankfully, that would be uh, that'd be one I would really probably fight for more so than others. And in my own divorce, thankfully, my ex was not interested in bourbon in the least bit. So Uh there was an agreement of I won't touch your snap on tools. You don't touch my whiskey. And we both don't say a word and go our separate ways. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) That brings a whole new meaning to allocated bottles. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. hmm, that could we can end up with some very interesting divorce arrangements with whiskey because a lot of it, it these bottles are irreplaceable that i mean yeah. you can't call those the, prenup bottles mm-hmm. and then figuring out of uh, the agreements of which bottles were purchased before the marriage which ones if any were a gift to just one of the people okay my yeah 
we might even need oh, and if it's somewhat of an amicable div- divorce then you could agree to share Okay. And we need to do. I, I could see this. I, and I like Katie being in the mix. We need to do a, a, a bourbon couple divorce show. And uh, how well, how do you handle? It's be that? good. Yeah, we could yeah. do like a mediation session for a, right. a bourbon divorce. Right, a bourbon divorce. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like that idea. A- anything else along the lines of stages of bourbon love? I think Evan did a, a good job of getting us going but, today for sure. I definitely I, went through what you described with the uh, being asked to being cut off. Mm-hmm. I tried once a self-imposed uh, buying period freeze. <laughs> uh-huh. um, it lasted about a month. Um, and then in the following month, you know, I bought more than I would have bought in that <laughs> yeah, month. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and Taylor's also tried to give me a buying freeze. So then I would just buy bottles and then put them in the lower cabinet um like, oh this just one? like this oh, yeah this is we've, this old thing? we've had it for oh, months because by the time here. she saw it it was months later Evan's and chugging half of it in the in the driveway right, so that right. when he brings it in it looks like oh we've had it for a long yeah time. huh well, this is a bottle we've had it's fine so <laughs> so like diets don't do it because they don't work okay you end up going the opposite direction yeah but having the healthy lifestyle not the diet. you have to have a healthy Lifestyle. Don't yo yo yes. on your bur- bourbon purchases. Just yeah. be buy what smooth. you want yeah, yeah. when you want it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but also make much. sure you can pay your mortgage. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, Do- don't sacrifice bills over bottles. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Bills over bottles. That, that could be a bumper sticker right there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. So there you go. There, there are what we think are the stages, and uh, yeah, it was kind of a fun topic and uh, good, well put together. So good job today, gang. We'll wrap this one up as we always do by talking about where people can find us. Katie, we'll start with you. Where can people find you? You can find me mediating uh, divorces on whiskey, and if they don't come to an agreement, jokes on them. I get to keep it, so that'll help them <laughs> find agreements real quick. It's true. You're you're like neutral in this situation. So like, if you continue you. arguing over this, my billable time will have me getting all these bottles. So uh, <laughs> also find me on Instagram at Katie Proof. All right, Evan. All right, you can find me on Facebook or Instagram at wit wisdom whiskey and buying enough bottles that i can still pay all my bills but buying more than i can currently drink there you go lenny you find me and the rest of deer hammer on social media at deer hammer on the web at deerhammer.com where you can order our bottles shipped to your door and you should come visit us in beautiful buena vista colorado all right miss becca sue you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Miss Becca Sue, one K, no C's. All right. For me, I'm an easy guy to find. I'm at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com, the important website. It's abvnetwork.com. Check it out because everything that we do is out there. we got over 3,000 shows for you to listen to, way more stuff than that. So check us out, abvnetwork.com. Stop by the ABV Barrel Shop in Arnold, Missouri, a St. Louis suburb, suburb, or at least check us out at abvbarrelshop.com where you can sign up for our email distribution list. You'll always be in the know. Ms. Becca Sue, anything else to say before we get out of here? i just like to remind the audience to please give us a five-star review that includes comments. It helps new people find the show, which is very important to us. If you like what we're doing, we ask you please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com backslash the ABV network. All right. Great job today, gang. For audience, we'll have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Peace. Before we finish the show, let's talk about some great companies that support the ABV network. First up is Moonshine Still Pro. Moonshine Still Pro has a full line of products to help the home distiller. Whether you want to experiment on the stove in your kitchen or you're looking for a bigger setup in your backyard, owner Russell Creed and his team can help. They have multiple still offerings, accessories, and even grain from their partners at Goldstone Mill to assist you in making whiskey on par with your favorite distillery. They can also help you with some fabricated parts you probably can't make yourself if you are attempting a DIY still project. Learn more or order your still or parts at moonshinestillpro.com. Another friend of ours is the Goldstein family at Goldstone Mill. The Goldsteins offer a variety of heritage and heirloom grains to make the finest whiskeys in the world. 
Plus, they are more than just a grain company. They are truly consultants to make sure the grains they are providing to you or your business meet your highest expectations. Additionally, they work with mills around the country ensuring shipping is as low as possible for their customers. If you are a distillery, brewery, or even doing this at home, Goldstone can assist you. Check them out at goldstonemill.com, call them at 217-254-6613, or check in via email at hello at goldstonemill.com. Last but not least is the ABV Barrel Shop. While we don't get to play in the allocated bourbon game because we aren't selling the other products you have to do to get those, we do have access via our friendships in the bourbon industry to some really cool stuff. Have you ever seen your favorite craft distiller selling some really cool limited offerings only in their gift shop? I'm talking things like the hazmat offering Distillery 291 did for their 10th anniversary, or Neely Family Distillery's Papaw's birthday barrel. They don't have enough of it to send it out to distributors, so they only sell it via their gift shop. Well, companies like Distillery 291 and Neely Family Distillery have agreed to sell us two or three cases of these offerings moving forward, meaning our store will have the access to some of the rarest whiskeys in the world way more difficult to come by than the allocated bourbon offerings with a national release. Yes, they will be extremely tough to come by, but if you're a customer of our store, you'll have a chance to get them. Get signed up for our email or text list over at abvbarrelshop.com so you don't miss out. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production. Thank <laughs> you.